Unit 2. Computers and Technology. Reading 1. Is the Internet ruining your memory? A prominent educator once warned that a popular new technology was becoming a crutch with a negative impact on his students' memories. That educator was Socrates, and the new technology he disliked was writing, on wax tablets and papyrus scrolls to be exact. The great orators of his time delivered memorized speeches without notes. Socrates saw writing as a threat to that tradition, and by extension, those mental faculties. Or so reported his student Plato, in Phaedrus anyway, True to his word, Socrates himself stubbornly refused to write his thoughts down. It's no great leap, therefore, to suppose Socrates would similarly disapprove of the Internet today. His attitude is echoed in growing concerns that the Internet is changing our brains. Many of these concerns center on the so-called Google effect, which some researchers and a growing number of journalists believe may have an adverse effect on our memories. At the heart of specific concerns about memory is a study authored by psychologist Betsy Sparrow. It was published in 2011 as Google Effects on Memory in the journal Science. In experiments at Harvard University, Sparrow's team found that subjects exposed to detailed, trivial information were more likely to forget it if told they could look it up online later. Subjects also tended to include the Internet among their own cognitive tools. It was as if the computer were part of their intellectual abilities. Hence, Sparrow concluded, the Internet has become a central player in our transactive memory. This is the sharing of information retention among persons, or in this case, digital networks, in a group. In short, Google has become everyone's brainy friend, the walking encyclopedia. Sparrow hypothesized this may have far-reaching effects on the way we think, and perhaps even the physiology of our brains. Critics of the study and of many of the other Google Effect articles that followed it point out what they see as significant flaws. The first is the questionable validity of the assumption that forgetting something because we can Google it later is any different from forgetting a phone number immediately after writing it down. The same study showed frequent Internet users were adept at remembering where to find information, if not the information itself. Moreover, Sparrow herself admits that transactive memory is nothing new. Long before Google, we had libraries with librarians and card catalogs to direct our searches. Is there proof that our memories are in fact getting worse because of Internet search engines? or that relying on them rather than the library has demonstrable physiological effects? So far, cognitive neuroscience has revealed no such data. And in the U.S., a country with one of the highest Internet usage rates, average IQ scores continue to steadily rise three points per decade. Standard tests of IQ measure fluid working memory and long-term retention. It may be too soon for a quantifiable negative effect to emerge, but until it does, the sticklers for evidence will likely remain unconvinced. Such panics often fail basic reality checks. The Harvard University research psychologist Steven Pinker states in a New York Times article on the subject, The effects of consuming electronic media are likely to be far more limited than the panic implies. What we do know about the plasticity, or changeability, of human memory should make us think twice about placing it in such high esteem. Recent findings in neuroscience have proven that we alter memories every time we access them. Therefore, even the most accurate memory is subject to plasticity. Over time, connected memories will change each other. This highlights the difference between accessibility and accuracy. Some humans may recall information well but plasticity will affect the accuracy of that information over time. 